our food supply. One of these that we haven't talked about too much, we've had a couple of interviews with him in the past, but this is a two-year struggle with a farmer in Michigan and other farmers who are having their pigs declared as a invasive species. And the state is trying to destroy those pigs as well as their livelihood. So joining us today is Mark Baker from Baker's Green Acres. Welcome, Mark. I wish we were talking under better circumstances. I wish we could be talking just about why people want to grow their own food, why they want to have good, clean, healthy heritage type of crops and animals. But instead, we're talking about how you're being persecuted by the state of Michigan. Tell us why they're coming after your pigs. What's different about your pigs versus the pigs of those people who are politically connected? <clears throat> well, <clears throat> they came out with a list of characteristics. And if your pig has even one of those characteristics, they say that your pig is feral. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's nine characteristics. A person can look at those on uh, the Department of Natural Resources website if they want. But one of the characteristics is the tail structure. They say if your pig has a straight tail or a curly tail that your pigs are illegal. So I, I think the uh, politically corrected people uh, connected people, their pigs have curly tails or straight tails. So I, I think it's all of our pigs. Hmm. It, it's just they're going to depend on who can do it and who can't. Yeah. Who can raise animals and who can't. I think that's what it is more. That's amazing. Now, there are some other real differences, though, with your pigs as well, because your pigs are not kept in a factory yeah. environment. So the meat is qualitatively different, just like people will get heritage uh, plants or they want raw milk. There are consumers out there who would like to have the choice of a different kind of meat. Tell us how your meat is different. Well, we raise them outside <clears throat> on pasture, <clears throat> so they're inherently more healthy than pigs that are raised in confinement. And we're not, we, we have no need to give them any kind of antibiotics or growth stimulants or anything like that. So, um, they're just more healthy, and then being that they're outside all the time, they exercise, they dig, they root, they eat dirt, they um, they take in the nutrients they need to create the body that they were intended to have, and their meat will be dark red instead of the other white meat that the uh, <laughs> pork industry puts out. That's right, and, and there's a lot of people who understand the benefits of having, say, grass-fed beef or free-range chickens because they don't want those kinds of uh, steroids and uh, other things that they do in a factory environment. They want a healthier animal that they're going to be eating. That's a premium product that people are willing to pay for. Consumers should be interested in this, not just farmers. And it's not just farmers, it's all businesses. If they can come in because somebody is politically connected and, and come after you, that's a very dangerous thing, regardless of what business you're in. But tell us how this started. This has been going on for like two years now. It's uh, actually, it's 32 months that this has been going on. We were ordered <clears throat> to depopulate our animals by April 1st of 2012 or face felony uh, arrest Wow! and, and uh, big fines. And um, I questioned that. And when I questioned it, I started getting a lot of flack from the Department of Natural Resources and so we wound up having to sue them for clarification of <clears throat> their declaratory ruling. We just wanted clarification on it. And then they countersued us with a $700,000 fine wow. and a threat for felony arrest if we didn't comply and threat to arrest my children, <clears throat> threaten to fine my customers, which destroyed my customer base, you know, instantly. Yes. So they're, at that point, we realized that their strategy was to just starve us, and then we would go away. But uh, the American people have come alongside of us and uh, helped us to keep the farm going. Wow. And be able to maintain our, our lawyers' uh, fees and court costs and things like that. Wow, that's amazing. And that's uh, bakersgreenacres.com is your website if people want to know how they can help you there. Now, you have yeah. something that is, where are you now in the process? You've got a court date coming up this week, don't you? Uh, yes, we do. <clears throat> Actually, we had a hearing last Wednesday because the Department of Natural Resources uh, had a revelation and they, they decided that our pigs were okay. 
after oh, really? all this time, all this money. Yeah. Wow. They had a revelation that our pigs were fine. And they contacted our lawyer and said that they were going to drop their countersuit and that they wanted us to drop our suit for clarification. And, uh, and we said, no, we can't at this point because we can't continue our business with, uh, their declaratory ruling out there that says any pig with a straight tail or a curly tail is illegal. We just, you can't build a business around that. Right. So, uh, and they went to the judge and wanted the judge to dismiss the case. And they called for a hearing last Wednesday. And, uh, it was, it was really something to see. <clears throat> we had a hundred people in the room that drove from all over the state, Patriot type folks. And we were there. Our lawyer was there. The judge was there. But the attorney from the attorney general's office didn't show up and called in 20 minutes prior and said that the weather was a little too much for him and he wasn't going to be able to make it. Hmm. So it was it was real interesting. And the judge wasn't thrilled. <laughs> and so it was rescheduled for this coming Wednesday at one o'clock. Well, maybe they think that they well, can they can wait you out and that the people who showed up won't come again. Maybe they, they ought to know better. Now. <laughs> yeah. I, I think you know, they've got an army of lawyers who are paid to do nothing but come after you. And here you are, a family farmer trying to survive on your own farm against this kind of outrageous persecution. That's it's just an amazing story. And I look at what the Stalinists did <clears throat> to the people in the Ukraine. I mean, that's part of the backstory about what's going on in the Ukraine. They starved the people out by coming after the farmers and doing things that were just purely arbitrary, giving them quotas to do, telling them what they could raise, what they couldn't raise. This is what Mao did in China. If you want the final step of coming after the people is to come after their food supply. But it's even broader than that. It, they have absolutely no constitutional authority to do this. People need to understand that they needed to pass a constitutional amendment to get alcohol prohibited because they had no authority to do that. And they don't have the authority to keep vital medicine away from people or food, but it's the same Food and Drug Administration that is doing both. They're, they're prohibiting all medicines unless they're expressly permitted. And now we've got, because this is not, this is the state of Michigan that you're fighting with, but this is probably something that is, that is a, a test case for the rest of the country, don't you believe? I, I think that's correct. And I think you're also right. They do not have the authority to do this or else they would have just come in here and taken my property and arrested me, but they yes. didn't. Yes. Um, the Fifth Amendment clearly states that we're guaranteed life, liberty, and, the, and property. And if they want to take that either one of those away from us, they have to go through due process of law, which they have not. So they are already in violation of const the Constitution. Yes, and yes. Well, let me ask you, there was a couple of uh, violent incidents. They, they did come on your property and shot some of your pigs at one point, didn't they? No, that wasn't me. That was oh. another guy by the name of uh, Dave Tuxbury. Okay, all right. And there's other farmers that are there. Did some of them just cave and, and let all their pigs be killed then? Uh, most of them did. Most of them. Most of them. This is what they do. They, they come on with perceived authority. Yes. And they'll say, you don't want to get in trouble, do you? And the farmers say no, and then they'll say, well, then shoot all your pigs and everything will be fine. Yep. And uh, the farmers do it because, you know, they're, they're just, well, uh, they don't know better. That's the way they take our rights in every sphere. That's what they do at the airports. They have no real authority to violate the Fourth Amendment and turn everybody into a suspect and to search our person. <laughs> I mean, that's one of the, the main things they'd be prohibited from, but they do it by intimidation under color of law, and they have no legal authority to do that. But they did put out a threat and made some very inflammatory remarks about you just about a month ago, didn't they? In terms of being uh, a gun-toting nut or no. lunatic or something? Yeah, yeah. That Post. was the uh, United States Department of Ag is what that was. That was USDA, a field agent, uh, briefed one of our old customers um, that, that he was briefed from his chain of command that they were to stay away from us because we were or stay away from me and the farm because we're gun waving lunatics. <clears throat> and uh, you know, that didn't help our case any at all, because it just puts every law enforcement person that I have to interface with on edge. Mm -hmm. Well, we've seen it's that over deep. and over again, that the federal government 
loves to characterize anyone who opposes their illegal actions as a gun-toting nut or somebody who is a possible terrorist threat. We see this in the training scenarios by the military. Frequently they talk about how Christians and people who talk about the constitutional limited government are the ones who are pulling off terrorist events. So this is how Washington gets involved. When, once Washington gets involved, they try to demonize you as a dangerous terrorist. So that, that's very, very concerning. Now, you wrote to the local sheriff and asked them for clarification about this and what their attitude was, or, or tell us what happened after that. Actually, what I did <clears throat> is I, uh, I had to create a paper trail on that. Um, to document the whole thing. So I called the sheriff's department and I said I wanted to make a police report. And they came out, they took the report, but then they refused to investigate it. <clears throat> and it ended right there. But I believe the sheriff's career ended right there as well. Yeah. Because the people of the county realized that they could be put in the same situation. And why do they want a county sheriff that's like that in place that has shown that he will not uh, stand up yes, yes. for their, their rights. Go. Well, Mark, it's been great talking to you. Thank you for taking a stand because this is, this is not just about pigs. It's not just about Michigan. This is really broad. And we have to start standing up for our rights and not surrendering them by a gradual process of infringement through intimidation. And that's exactly what you've done. I know it's been a difficult thing for your family to try to survive and, and keep things going, keep the farm going as you've been attacked in this. And how can people help you? We're doing a, uh, a fundraising campaign right now to try and uh, take care of some uh, some legal debts that we have. And you can, people that want to donate can go to bakersgreenacres.com and there's a pledgey button there on the right that a person could make a donation if, if they were so inclined. And that would be greatly appreciated. That gives us the ammunition to continue the, the battle. Well, thank you, Mark. Thank you for doing this, for standing up for everybody's rights. Thank you. You know, it's amazing the hypocrisy of the government. It knows no bounds. The fact that they could call his pigs an invasive species when the Supreme Court supports the right of Monsanto to actually create invasive species in the laboratory and allow that pollen to cross-pollinate into natural heritage breeds and then treat that as if it was theft instead of a trespass. Just amazing. The hypocrisy of the government knows no bounds. This is not the fight of one farmer on his own. This is a fight for anybody, everyone in this country, to be able to have the kind of food that they want, whether they want natural, clean heritage food or whether they want something out of a factory, out of a laboratory. And it's also a fight for anyone who has a business and wants to have privacy and private property that they can have under the Constitution, enjoy the rights of a home that is not going to be invaded unless they're breaking a legitimate law. These laws are not legitimate. So we hope that you'll support him in this, that you'll stay tuned to find out what's going on with it. And we hope you'll support us too at Prison Planet TV. One subscription will allow you to share that with 10 other people simultaneously. It's a great way to get out the information, the news that everyone needs to hear because we all need to hang in this together or they're going to take us down separately by gradually infringing on our rights. Well, that's it for tonight. We'll be back tomorrow at 7 Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. When the news came out last night that Piers Morgan had been axed from CNN after three years of plunging ratings, Many publications, like the Financial Times of London, gave me at least partial credit for his undoing. I'm here to set the record straight. Piers Morgan destroyed himself. He had two million viewers a night when he took over from Larry King three years ago. CNN promoted him like it was the second coming of Obama or Christ, and it fell flat on its face. Anti-gun, anti-sovereignty, pro-police state. Piers Morgan across the board is the classic fascistic fake liberal with the condescending British accent the whole nine yards. And as news began to come out that he was at the head of a major hacking scandal in England, 
Time Warner and CNN have thrown the Brit 